Yo, what's going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another video. Today what we're going to be doing is showing you guys the second new brawler, Griff. Now, Griff is an epic brawler and he's actually pretty interesting. I think he plays totally different than any other brawler we have in the game right now. And I'm going to be showing you guys every little thing you guys need to know about Griff, including some matchups that you want to avoid and some matchups that you want to go into. So with that being said, let's hop into the video and let's show you guys what's up. Now before we get into the video, if you guys plan on purchasing gems to get Griff, I would highly appreciate it if you guys can use code Bobby. I recently got my code and obviously I am not as big as a creator as some of the other guys who have codes. Every one of you that use my code helps a lot more than you guys know. So if you guys can use it, it would mean the world. But that being said, let's get into the gameplay and let's show you guys everything you need to know about Griff. All right, so to start off, we're going to be talking about Griff's HP. Griff has a total of 4,760 HP, which is a little bit on the lower side, but it does make sense given his range. He has a nine tile attack, which is on the definitely upper half of the attack ranges, and he has a 10 tile super. So Griff has a lot of range when it comes to his attacks and his supers, and you do not need to be close to any brawlers at all. So talking a little bit more about Griff's super cashback, it's actually one of the stronger supers in the game, in my opinion. It has a very, very wide shot radius. It is 10 tiles wide and 10 tiles long. So it is going to be extremely difficult for you to miss this super. You can hit multiple targets and the cards can pierce. It does 924 damage per card, but the catch is that if you are right beside someone, it is not going to do that much damage. The further away you are, the more damage it does, and it caps at 952. So you can be doing a lot of damage to multiple different brawlers at once, but obviously the further you are, the better it's going to be. Now, the further you are, you're likely to hit less cards than if you're right beside someone. So obviously, you know, there's some give and take there with the damage. It's up to you guys to figure out exactly how you guys want to use this super and when you want to use it. Now, the catch with this super is that you can't shoot it through walls. So just like Carl's pickaxe, when you throw it, you can change your position on the map and the cards are going to come back a different way than how you shot it. This is a really, really useful thing to do because if the opposing brawler is going to be trying to dodge, you can just follow it and try and hit it with as many cards on the way back as possible. Now going into Griff's attack coin toss, each coin does 308 damage. But the catch is that there are three coins per row and three rows per one ammo, which means there are nine total coins being shot. This means you can do up to 2,772 damage. Now, this is a lot of damage. If you go up to a Primo and you mash that auto aim button, you can do almost 8,000 damage or I think actually just above 8,000 damage. Now, the issue with that is if you go right beside a Primo, not only now with the balance changes are you charging its super by hitting it for so much damage, but it's also hitting you, which means it's going to get its super very, very fast. And your shot takes a while to shoot since there are three different rows of coins being shot. Additionally, the reload speed is exactly just normal. It's just your average reload speed. So it's not like a tank where you can just walk up to someone and go into an intense auto aim 1v1. You are just going to be shooting your three shots and hoping for the best. So do not just walk up to a Frank with 10,000 HP shoot it three times and think you're going to win because you are not going to win that. Now on to the gadget piggy bank. Now this gadget is not really that strong to be honest. It takes a while for it to actually detonate after you put it on the ground, which means it's not going to be that useful in a lot of brawler interaction 1v1s. Now something that is actually really good with it though, is that it does have a pretty big blast radius for a wall break. I mean, it's not massive, but it's not just one or two tiles. It has a fairly decent radius. So what this means, is if you're playing something like Backyard Bowl and you're playing a Sprout, for example, like Lukey Bear hiding behind a wall just trying to chip you down, you can just walk up, click your gadget, walk back, and that bomb is going to detonate, or I should say that piggy bank is going to detonate, and there's going to be no wall there for Lukey Bear anymore. You're going to be able to have an open lane, which is what you want as a griff, which is what we're going to be showing you a little bit later on in the video, and it's going to be really easy for you guys to get a kill. Now, if a tank is chasing you, it's a really good way to just click that super and get the tank to go away or run the other way. But outside of that, there's not really any other uses for this gadget. Now going into our first star power, keep the change. This is a fairly simple star power. It's just going to make your shots shoot 35% faster, which again is actually really important since it takes a while for your shots to go out. And like I said earlier, if you're in an auto aim battle, it's going to take a very long time for you to get three shots out or four with that reload speed. So this is actually a very, very useful star power. 
and it's going to come in handy a lot of the time against tanks. As you guys can see, there's actually a pretty big difference between the first star power shooting speed and without the first star power shooting speed. So again, play with what you want. If you're more comfortable shooting at the speed with the second star power, I mean, I guess you also get the bonus of the second star power. But that first one is really going to come in handy with auto aim battles. Coming in with our second star power, we have business resilience. Now, this is a fairly simple star power. If you have one HP, I don't know the exact math off the top of my head right now, but you're going to be gaining about 450 total HP. And then once you have that and you have 450 HP, two seconds later, maybe you're going to gain about 300 HP and so on and so on. So you never actually have to just stand there and stop shooting to regain health which can actually be really useful. But if you think you're going to be high HP for majority of the game, let's say you have 4.5 thousand HP and you're only gaining 7%, then you're only gaining about, you know, 20 HP every two seconds. And then it's just going to be basically useless and you definitely want to have the first star power on. Now, what I am going to say is with the no ammo during respawn change, this can actually be really useful dependent on the scenarios and all that. So I don't know how it's going to play with this new change. But we are going to see, I think both star powers are both really useful and we're just going to have to see which one performs better. Now we're going to be going into some gameplay and showing you guys how Griff does against certain groups of brawlers. Now I'm not going to be covering absolutely everything here, but we're going to give you guys an absolute majority of what you guys can expect. So first off, we're going to be showing you guys against range. So thank you, by the way, to Nat for absolutely destroying me on this because it gives a very good example of how Griff does against long range. We're going to be having Piper absolutely destroy me here. Now, you guys might think I'm not really trying, but to be honest, it's pretty hard to be a Piper as a Griff. You have less shots, you do less damage unless you hit everything, which is basically impossible at that 9 tile, 8 tile, 10 tile range. There's basically no way. You get outranged by these super ranged brawlers and stuff like Piper or Bell or Brock slightly outranges you. So this isn't really a good matchup at all for you to be going against long range brawlers in an open map. I would definitely be avoiding that. So on maps like Shooting Star or other bounty maps or Purple Paradise, if you're 1v1ing against the Piper, do not be going Griff because that range will definitely eat you alive. So now we're going to be talking about tanks. and We're going to be showing you guys some Primo gameplay. Now Primo and the other tanks, it's going to be really complex against Griff. Now at face value, you guys might say, you know, this does a lot of damage from up close and you have like 10 more tiles than every tank to shoot from so you should be perfectly fine now kind of yes if it was an open map with zero walls and it was called purple paradise you will win every 1v1 you will never lose they won't even get a shot off on you but unfortunately every map is not purple paradise there are walls there are obstacles and that's what's going to be challenging for griff with the recent change that supercell has made tanks now gain supercharge off of you hitting them so with Griff doing a lot of damage and very much lacking the finisher ability because a brawler can just go hide behind a wall, it does not take long for tanks to charge their super against you. Additionally, once a tank, for example, a Primo jumps on you, there is absolutely no shot you are getting that kill. You can put down your gadget, but the gadget takes like 2-3 seconds to actually detonate. So by the time it actually goes off, the Primo will have just walked off somewhere else probably have killed you by then and it won't even matter. The main difficulty here really does come with finishing the kill because this brawler doesn't have any bounce, any type of curve. It's just a perfectly straight shot. If someone hides behind a wall or behind any type of object, you are not going to be able to hit them. So it's going to be incredibly difficult for Griff to get a kill on a tank. Again, it can do good work and in actual 3v3 mode where you have teammates that can finish off your kills, it's not going to be too difficult to kill tanks. But with just Griff alone, if you're on a lane with a tank, it is going to be extremely difficult to finish off that kill and consistently win your lane. So now we're going to have mid range, and Pam, I think, is the perfect example to show you guys Griff because this is exactly what Griff excels at. You want to be playing those mid range brawlers, the Nitas, the Sandys, the Carls, the Pams, the Gene, anything in that mid range, Griff absolutely destroys in here is why because you have more tiles than they do and you also do more damage than they do now one thing you don't have is more hp than the majority of mid ranges but that is perfectly fine because they shouldn't be able to hit you anyways they're going to try and come close to you but every single time they do you're going to be able to hit them for like 2000 damage then 1000 then maybe 900 then maybe another 2000 and they're going to be so low in hp by the time they get into their distance to be able to shoot you they're practically going to be one or two shot unless you whiff every single shot you take, in which I cannot help you with that. But 
you're basically going to have a very easy time against the vast majority of mid ranges. This is exactly what Griff excels at, and this is exactly what you want to be playing into. Maps like Backyard Bowl, Dueling Beetles, Super Stadium, just maps where you're going to be facing Nita's, Jesse's, Pam's, Carl's, anything of that sort, that is where Griff is going to shine the most. It's going to be very easy for you to dominate with Griff against mid-range brawlers, and I do expect him to make an absolute statement for himself in modes like Gem Grab, where you're going to be seeing a lot of those mid-range brawlers. Now, I don't have any gameplay of Griff against throwers, but let me tell you, this is just not going to be a fun matchup. You're going to lose this every single time. You have no way to hurt the throwers. They have every single way to hurt you, unless you break the wall that they are hiding behind with your gadget. But even if you do that, they are just going to find a different wall. If you think you're going to face a thrower, do not queue up as Griff. And with that being said, that's going to end the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, I'm very new to this stuff. So if you guys have any tips or recommendations or anything else you guys want me to cover, just leave it in the comment section below. That's going to be it for me today. I hope you guys have been enjoying these videos and I will see you again hopefully tomorrow. Peace.